Hi folks, Lou here, and I'm going to talk about something that's tangentially related to game design, which is that Russian propaganda is nonsense. And I'm talking, of course, about the Ukraine war. It shows the kind of thinking that may dangerously come into games, whether it's game design or game playing. And you'll see that perhaps as I go along. So I monitor, although not closely, what is happening in the Ukraine war, and I see a whole lot of wishful thinking, quote unquote, and just plain lying, mostly on the Russian side. The kind of behavior that is very destructive to your chances of success in war and in games. <coughs> Keep in mind, experience has shown, quote, how do you know a Russian official is lying, unquote, answer, their lips are moving. And only people who have lost touch with how the world works believe what the Russians say. The Russians are also stuck in an autocratic way of doing things, which seems to be lying to each other, rampant corruption, ignoring reality in favor of emotion. And I'll give the, some examples. And most of these are quoted directly from actual comments online. <coughs> Unconditional surrender is the only practical solution for Ukraine. Well, think about this. Ukraine has seen the massacres and deportations of children that Russia indulges in. The massacres are of adults, but, you know, that take people out of a house and kill them. Why would they submit to more of that? Why would they submit to monsters, war criminals? It doesn't make any sense at all. Compare, Ukraine is getting better and better equipment all the time from their allies. The Russians are fielding older and older equipment. Many nations are contributing to Ukraine. Russia has few allies and fewer friends. So they're not going to get much help. The Russian economy continues to worsen under sanctions. In other words, time is against Russia. Why would Ukraine surrender? Another one, Zelensky is running out of cannon fodder. Well, history shows us how many people can be brought into the military. Demographics are different now. There are more older people and fewer young people. On the other hand, women are more likely to be in military service now, especially in Ukraine and Russia, than formerly. In World War II, generally 10% of a nation's total population was in the military. 10%. For Ukraine, that's upwards of 4.5 million. And of course, for the Russians, it's much more. Neither side is going to run out of men. They may run out of the will to use those men, the will to have those men killed. But they're not going to run out of men. We don't know Ukraine's casualties, but surely they're less than 100,000 dead at this point. Whereas Russia and the DPR and the LPR and convicts are over 250,000, as indicated by death penalties being paid in Russia. So the notion that Ukraine is suffering enormous casualties appears to me nonsense. It's hard to know what the rates are, but we can look at doctrine. Russian doctrine relies on artillery and waves of poorly trained troops. They've done that since World War II. The Ukrainians are more like NATO, wanting to preserve their troops. <clears throat> Part of the reason the Ukrainian offense is slow is preserving troops. On the other hand, equipment visually confirmed losses are much, much worse for the Russians. Why would it be different for troops? And this is quite apart from the expensive planes and ships that the Russians are losing lately. Another <clears throat> troll statement, Russia has been holding back. And when they decide to really go all in, Ukraine is doomed. Well, this is nonsense. Why would Russia hold back for more than a year and a half? Why would they mobilize 300,000 plus additional troops instead of using what they held back, quote unquote? Wouldn't they use more modern equipment than T-55 tanks and ancient artillery if they had it? Surely they would. It doesn't make any sense to hold it back. Wouldn't they defend Crimea and the, their fleet better 
if they had additional stuff that they were holding back. This is an example of wishful thinking with capital letters. Oh, somehow Russia's held stuff back. No, no, they haven't. Another one, USA, cannot, etc. cannot afford the war. Well, most of the equipment sent to Ukraine is old. Much of it has been taken out of service or is scheduled for replacement. <clears throat> F-16s are 40 years old. The tanks are not, in most cases, the latest versions. Countries are taking advantage of the opportunity to get rid of their old stuff and build new stuff and renew their militaries. And of course, we have situations like the US Marines stopped using Abrams tanks, so they have lots of them in storage. What are you gonna do with those? You're gonna have to pay to dispose of them properly or give them to somebody else. So you can count up the original cost in dollars, but that's money long spent. It may be cheaper to give Ukraine this equipment than to dispose of it properly. So only the ignorant think this is terribly expensive. Yes, there's some money here, but it's a lot better than Americans and Europeans dying in Ukraine or somewhere else. Another bit of propaganda, the Ukrainian offensive has failed. This is an example of very short-term thinking. The war has already lasted a year and a half, and it's likely to last for years more. So why sweat a few months? Quite apart from historical examples of failure followed by spectacular success. For example, Normandy after D-Day. For a couple months, we didn't get very far, and then we broke through the Germans and ran across France very fast. The 1854-55 Crimean War. The British and French and some others landed on the Crimea and besieged Sevastopol or Sevastopol for quite a long time. But when they finally succeeded, the Russians gave up. The war was over. So as long as the Russians are consistently going backwards and as long as Russia suffers more than Ukraine, the offensive has not failed. In other words, a little thinking and logic renders Russian propaganda pointless and nonsense, even though we see a lot of people in America repeating that propaganda. Thanks for listening.